Good morning, guys. A little chilly here in Oklahoma, but welcome to WOW, Word on Wheels. If you're checking this out for the first time, I hope you enjoy it, number one. Uh, number two, I hope it, it creates a deeper hunger to answer questions. What I teach should create questions in you because we can't grow until we question what we do know. And so I want to thank you very much for your time. I hope you guys are enjoying uh, doing this every week <clears throat> and being a part of it. And you are a vital part of it because when you share these posts with your friends and contacts, it is, it's a blessing to the ministry in the aspect uh, I do this to get the word out uh, to bring an encouragement, and the Word of God is always encouragement, but <clears throat> you that listen to me enough know the Word of God is not just bound by leather with a translator's uh, title on it. The Word of God is the thoughts of God, and so the Bible gives us thoughts. The Word of God comes through the thoughts that reading the Word gives us. And so, anyway, I won't chase that rabbit. But thank you guys so much. Again, uh, welcome to 2020, the year of blessing. And uh, it, may, it may be hard to see that this year has been a blessing, but the blessing it is that it has made us think outside the box. We get in such a rat race, we get so confined with what we determine is normal, and we say, well, that's just the way life is. We are about to enter a new era of life we didn't even know. Even technologically, uh, the stock market, everything else. It, I'm, I'm excited. I don't like, as a self-employed minister, who you rely on your ministry uh, going around the country uh, to be shut down. That has not been fun, but many of you are, are just so faithful to be a blessing and trust in the ministry. I appreciate that. And I see a lot of you guys chiming in. And uh, let me say this while I am thinking of it. This coming Friday and Saturday night, I think last week I said Saturday and Sunday, but this coming Friday and Saturday evening at 7 o'clock, I will be in Breckenridge, Texas at a event center called The Popular. I believe it's at 130 West Walker. If you're in that area of Abilene, Dallas, Fort Worth, Eastland, Graham, all those surrounding towns. Hey, get the word out and we we will you you practice what you would going to Walmart, social distancing. Uh, you want to wear a mask. I'm not sure of the of the uh, local law or the state law there in Texas on the mandate of the mask. But just keep in mind, not everybody's faith is on the same level, and we want everyone to feel comfortable. So you you live out what you want to there. You're a grown person. But I just wanted to let you know, next Friday and Saturday night, be sure and come be a part of that if you possibly can. So anyway, I love you guys. I want to get right into something that... I have, I have thoughts, and thoughts lead to study, and I'll know the thought was from God because the study confirms the thought. And in Matthew, the fifth chapter, the fifth verse, I, I really began to look at one of the Beatitudes of the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus was uh, ministering on. And the reason I, I started looking at that is because I know we live in a society that can devalue you, uh, a society of insecurities uh, that leads to poverty and lack, lack of ambition. And I just want to tell you, and I hope you hear this in some way or another from me 
every week and the Holy Spirit shares it with you every day. But you yourself are so valuable, it's crazy. I think many times people just do not know or realize how much effort God put in to creating you to be you. They have determined, and this was fascinating to me, they have determined in my genetic code, your genetic code, an individual's genetic code, if someone was to write out the formation of my DNA in a genetic code, it would take 3 billion, with a B, pages to record my genetic code. 3 billion. It would take 3 billion pages to record your genetic code. Do not even think for a minute God doesn't see you. He wrote three billion pages about you, okay? And so they say there are 73,000 and some odd words in the King James translation. Your life would be thousands of times more than that. So the Word of God is not just bound by leather. You are the Word of God bound by skin, but free in the Spirit. And understanding the investment God has made in us, I look at Matthew the fifth chapter and the fifth verse where Jesus, and this is very familiar, you, you don't even really have to think about it, but the word says, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. So let's be a little deductive in our thinking here. If I become meek, the earth is mine. Now, I don't mean when, when the Bible, and, and this, is, this is Old Testament, uh, it's still in the Old Covenant, even though it's in the Gospels, it's still in the Old Covenant. So it is allegorism, uh, it is typology, it's first in the natural, then the spiritual. Uh, earth represents man and everything man is entitled to, okay? And so retranslated, blessed are the meek because they will get everything man is entitled to. My question is, have you gotten everything you're entitled to? You're entitled to health, life, peace, happiness, prosperity in every measure of life. You are free to set your own boundaries. You are free to be you. And so in my upbringing, I'm 64 years old, and in my upbringing in church, uh, I was always under the impression through the teaching uh, that the word meek means to be just an isolated, inferior, cow down, bow down type of person. And, and the other day when I was having these thoughts, I, I began to put two and two together. How many Christians live a life where they get run over by people? Well, I'm a Christian. I have to put up with it. No, you don't. No, you don't. The very fact you're a Christian is proof you don't have to put up with it. Some of you are putting up with stuff right now. You have no right to put up with it. It doesn't mean it's going to change. It just means it has no right to affect you the way it has been affecting you. Some of you have let people get under your skin. Become meek. 
Some of you live your life perpetuating confession of, oh, I shouldn't have got angry. I shouldn't have done this. I, 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 I blew up. I, I let my steam off. I, I'm not a good Christian because that didn't show meekness. I didn't cower to that person. In other words, Christianity, if you just understand that limited definition, and, and in the word meek in the Greek language that Jesus used is pros, pros. Pros means to be mild, to be humble, to be gentle. And if that's the only definition, because a lot of times, and I have found this, I remember years ago when I really got hungry to have the Bible make sense to me, I started studying the Word. And when I became aware of the Strong's context of, of Greek and Hebraic words, I thought, my God, I have arrived. But then I began to understand <clears throat> that is just their idea of what the word means. So then I started understanding, you know what? Had Strong's and Vines never come out with their expository dictionaries, the Bible defines itself. You just have to study the Bible. Not read it, but study it. You can read it to quote it, or you can study it to understand it. And I wanna bring us some understanding today because many of you get run over. I did for years because you wanted to stay meek because the meek inherit the earth. Well, my God, if you're beat down, why, why would you be meek? The earth is yours. Let me put it this way. The earth is for your taking. What God has promised and you have inherited is waiting on you to take it. But as long as you live in a limited definition of being humble, bowing down, cowering down, let people do to you what they want to do, and, and you just have to take it and put up with it because God's keeping some big record in heaven. And when you die and face him at the gates of pearl, then he's going to look at the book and say, yep, you were lowly and humble and you let them just mess all over you. And so I'm going to let you in because you beat yourself up. That's not the way it works, people. I know some religions teach it that way, but there is a little better understanding. That's not the God we serve. I don't think uh, in that definition, Jesus was being humble and lowly when he went into the temple and cleared it out. You know, I, I really don't. So what's this? There's always been those who have attempted to conquer the earth. Now remember the goal of meekness. The goal of meekness, according to Matthew 5.5, 5, is not to show Christ to other people. The goal is to inherit the earth, and the believers who inherit the earth show more of the life and the living of Christ in them. So as I walk in my inheritance, I am revealing the aliveness of God inside of me. So meekness is that missing component to many of us walking into what God has promised us. And there's always been people that have attempted to conquer the earth because that was the goal. Have what God promised you. Well, Mark, I thought my goal was uh, to be like Christ. You were never called to be Jesus. I like what my buddy Stan said. And Stan, if you're watching, I love you, man. Uh, I, I like what he, he came out with on his post here a while back. We were never called to be like Jesus. We were called to be ourselves. And in the process, they see the liberty of Jesus in us. And so, 
you know, there, there's always people trying to conquer the earth. It, you've seen it through the pharaohs of Egypt. You've, you saw it in history through Alexander the Great, Napoleon, Adolf Hitler. They all tried to conquer the earth, but they didn't do it. They were ruined. But one thing they had in common, they had huge armies, they had awesome power, but they could not rule their own spirit. And in the end, they lost their dreams, they lost their kingdom, they did not inherit what they set out to do. And how many believers today die never having conquered what God said is theirs? Let, let me show you this. <clears throat> now, when Jesus said, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth, this is not the quality that most people associate with conquering the world. A lowly, weak person because we have associated meekness with weakness. Quit. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Quit. Those days are over. You need to tell yourself today, I am done being meek in that limited measure because I want to show you some depth of truth that light bulbs will go off. Part of the problem is our concept. I say part of the problem, pretty much all of the problem of a believer inheriting the earth or man inheriting the earth is what we usually associate with that meekness as weakness. Now what's this? In a deeper Greek understanding of that word meek, it means a wild horse that has become obedient to the bit and the bridle. Retranslated, it is strength under control. It's anything but wimpiness and passivism. The worldview of meekness is often understood and mistaken for passivity and docility, but weak, it is not a weak. Meekness is not a weak, but it is a heroic quality. It's a virtue, and it can be exercised both towards God and towards man, and it involves self-control. Break, break it down. Meekness is knowing you have all the power, but you keep it under control. Okay? The basic element of weakness of meekness, rather, the basic element of meekness is derived from its root meaning, which is equilibrium. The full and complete possession of all the faculties of one's being and being able to master it inside of you. You are a meek person if you can control your temper. You are a meek person if you can control your anger. You are a meek person if you can control your judgmentalism. You are a meek person if you can control your attitude. So meekness has not to do with weakness. It has to do with the ability to bridle the horse. The horse represents your power or saddle that horse, if you will, and bridle the tongue. So a meek person is a person with all this power, but they control their tongue. Good Lord, I need to write a redneck Bible. That's what it means. So blessed are those who have all the power. I think Jesus said, behold, I give you power. Blessed are those who have all the power, but can control themselves. They are under control. If you're being weak, you're out of control. If you're being meek, 
you're in control. That's too simple, isn't it? I wish I had been taught this at a young age. Now, not understanding the truth of this definition will cause the earth to conquer you. Have you ever been, I've been here, I've been at that place. Have you ever felt like what you're going through is conquering you? Then you're not exercising your power of meekness. If you complain about the problem a lot, you're not being meek. If, and, and it's hard for me to be around people that complain all the time. I'll listen to it for a minute and then I just leave. People who misconstrue what meekness is. Now watch this. According to psychology, people who misconstrue weakness as being a doormat and not being strong under control usually mask their insecurities. In other words, they come off as somebody they're really not only to please you. That's being a doormat. If you can't be yourself in front of someone else, you are being a doormat. People who misconstrue what meekness is will always battle failing thoughts as an option to their outcome. How many thoughts do you have of failing at something? Well, you're normal. But how many times do you let those thoughts unbridle your tongue and zap you of your strength? People who don't really know what meekness is, strength under control, they think <coughs> they can do everything. They can't. Well, Mark, the Word says, I can do all things through Christ. I'll read the Word and then study it. Paul was talking in connotation, in context of, I can be abased and I can be abound. In other words, I can walk through the fire, I can walk through heaven, and I bridle my tongue because I am meek. So I can do all things. I can go through good times and bad times. It doesn't take my strength, and I always guard my tongue. James said your tongue is like the sail on a ship. It guides where your life goes. Do you realize our ignorance of meekness has brought us into health problems, psychological problems, financial problems, letting people use us, trying to please, trying to please. I have discovered a new power of meekness, and I want you to as well. People who misconstrue what meekness is, try to control other people. Because see, if I can control you, then I don't have to feel like a doormat. How about this? Don't feel like a doormat and you won't have to control them. What? Yes, stop feeling like a doormat and you won't have to control them, okay? So you, you may be wondering how in the world do I recalibrate my meekness? The good news is it's possible. And if you'll listen to this and adhere to it and make it applicable in your life, it's going to be probable. Number one, you've got to know what the true definition of, of meekness is. You are a wild, powerful horse with a bridle and a bit. In other words, you're confident in your decisions. You can control your tongue and, and exercise your power in the area of self-control. Meekness is self-control. It's interchangeable. How do I recalibrate my meekness? I take responsibility for what I can control and I simply accept 
what I can't control. If you're out of control, then your situation will control you. When you're in control of your emotions, in control of your power, nothing you go through can affect you. Look at the life of Jesus. He was the example. So how do I recalibrate recal my meekness? I ask for help when I'm in need. Asking for help does not mean that you are weak. It means you are strong in knowing I need to understand something. I need some help in this. You need to take time to take control of what you focus on. Either they will control you or you'll control yourself. Never complain about someone who tries to control you. They can't do it unless you don't exercise your power of meekness. Winston Churchill said this. He said, success is stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. I love that. Success is stumbling from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. What has caused you to lose your enthusiasm about inheriting the earth? Then I'm going to invite you to stop being a doormat. Exercise your meekness. Be gentle. The word says Jesus was gentle and lowly. What does that mean? It means he could control himself even when he put you first. Be gentle and lowly. Stop letting people control you. Start bridling the tongue of all your power. You're still a horse but only you can put the bridle in. And that happens when you know who you are, how special you are. Three billion pages of genetic code makes up your existence. Come on, you're worth something. You're worth more than cowing down and bending low and letting people run over you. You're not showing Christ by doing that. You're showing that you don't believe in yourself. So Father, I release over these people a new enthusiasm to begin to stand up, not in arrogance, but in boundaries. I will not let you bring that out in me. I am in self-control. I am in full control. I am a horse with a bridle. And so today, I speak that over you, and whatever uh, has been out of control in your life, I would encourage you, let's get back in charge of our life. Behold, I give you power and authority over all the powers. Okay, and so again, I will let you guys go. My Texas friends, West Texas friends, I hope to see you Friday evening at the popular uh, there in Breckenridge on the main street and uh, also Saturday evening at seven. So come and be a part of it. And I, I certainly appreciate all of you. Uh, some of you have partnered with the ministry. We send out a sermon CD once a month. We don't send t-shirts and mugs and all that. I'm not against it. I just don't do it. Uh, but it, it's, it's not to give you something for what you give. It's to feed you. There's many partners we have that don't support the ministry but they still get the message because I don't sell the gospel. Uh, your giving facilitates the gospel getting out. And so I thank you so, so very much. I love you guys. Email me, contact at markshellministries.com, markshellministries at gmail.com. 
MS Ministry with an I at AOL.com. Go to the webpage, MarkShellMinistries.com. And this thing is about to end, and I'm going to get to get back out and see you guys. So bless you. Have an awesome day.